yeah, you know, we've just we've been involved with a lot of these games right here, you know, one possession games at the end. And you look out through college basketball, whether you watch tonight or tomorrow or throughout the tournament, you'll go see, you know, just plays being made at the end of games. And, uh, you know, so we had, I thought, you know, we, we tried to run a set play for Matt at the end. They did a good job guarding him. Then we came back and we missed the ball screen there. And, uh, but you got it in your, your, you know, your leading score, your best player's hands. And, uh, and then, you know, they bailed us out a little bit. But I thought we did a great job really trying to deny on the side at the end and uh, came down and drove it, trying to get it to the rim. It's kind of a, a play with no timeouts. And, uh, you know, they had a good job contesting. So give Vanderbilt credit. I mean, it's not like, you know, Scotty Pippen, first team all league. He made, you know, banked one in, but he made some plays down the stretch. And, uh, you know, so tough loss for, for us at home, for sure. From your perspective, y'all were up 10, three to go in the first half, and from back to the second half, what did you see? The very foul time? trouble. We got foul trouble. You know, foul trouble. I, you know, I put Sammy in, and, and, and I could, Sammy didn't give us anything physical. And so I had to put Nas back in the game. I didn't want to, but I did, and he got three fouls. Matt had two fouls. Jarkel had two fouls. And we, we didn't end the, you know, end the game the right way defensively. And... Uh, uh, so, you know, trying to go with, you know, but that per other personnel had done some decent things, you know, in the last three or four weeks. So, uh, but that was really it, you know, but still, you know, we're up, you know, we shoot a good percentage, held them to 33% and we're only up, what, seven at the half, but still we're up seven. And then just our inability to kind of start second halves has been kind of our, our, our biggest thing the whole year. And, uh, Nobody's emphasized it and tried to do things to help us get better in the first five minutes, second half. What was the explanation on the change of the foul? Yeah, uh, he said it was a cylinder call. And if you if you call and and and, and they're they're good officials, okay? They're good officials, and I'm not griping about the call. I didn't see it. I'll see it. But how many cylinder calls are there in college basketball throughout today? A thousand, a thousand of them. I guess you just have a chance to review a cylinder call. I mean, the cylinder is when a guy's right there, you know, I mean, just right on top of him in a cylinder, you know. So, uh, I don't know. That was a tough call. That was a real tough call. And uh, it's just kind of maybe been that kind of year, you know. But uh, last possession games uh, and that. So, we'll take a look at it. And uh, I'm not saying it was a bad call. I'm just saying I'd like to know how many cylinder calls you could call in a game if you're going to call that one. James there on the last play, was that just him operating? No, you know, it was just, yeah, we'd love to get it to, to AC, and we're trying to, to run a, a smash screen from Jamin. And as a freshman, he just kind of took off, you know, and uh, usually pretty good, you know, in that. He didn't get it to the rim and shot a contested shot. But on a miss, you know, we had a play call. The game was three, and we had a play call if it was two. And, uh, and it was two, and we're going to have Jamin. But, you know, the floor kind of sometimes on those scrum plays off an offense, off a rebound, off a free throw, the floor was imbalanced. You know, and that's, that's all. Again, watch games. They just go freaking right at the rim, and somebody goes and makes a play, gets fouled at the end. That's just, it's just college basketball. And we hadn't done it all year long in the, in the crunch time to, to win a game. Coach, um, after dropping the close one like this at home, what does that really do for momentum going into the ACC? I don't think it really creates a lot of momentum. You know, I don't, I don't think it does that. Uh, but, you know, we have thought we played well against Kentucky. Had some spots today. Uh, it was a game we should have won at home. We didn't. And uh, so now we got to go play Missouri, I think. And uh, Missouri has played well against us twice. And they beat Georgia today at home. And so we'll take off tomorrow and just go right back to preparation. And, uh, you know, we, we got to get some other guys to play. You know, Jarkel, you know, has got to pick it up, you know, a second score, you know. And, uh Thought we you know we got the ball to Nas uh, today and uh, need to get him more shots. You know, thought Austin played good today. He was aggressive, seven assists, no turnovers. Really ran our team well, and so need a couple more guys besides those guys to play well in this tournament. We can go try to get hot and try to go win multiple games in the tournament, which you can do. Jamin led y'all in rebounding today. Looked pretty active on the defensive class. Just yeah. kind of, where have you seen him grow? He's just playing harder. He's playing harder. We've got to have an unbelievable offseason with Jamin, with his body, you know, and, uh, and just some things basketball-wise. He's willing to do that. But I think he's just competing harder. And, uh, you know, and so credit to him. You know, he, he, he missed some shots that I think he's open. He took really good shots today. I thought we had some unbelievable shots in the second half. And, 
just couldn't make shots. You know, I mean, from Jarkale to all of them, shots we want them to take, and we just we missed some shots. Uh, but but I thought Jamin is competing harder for sure. Austin, I think maybe his best game since that Georgia game over there. Just what is it for him to try to straighten those together instead of maybe one every couple of weeks? Yeah, you know. Um, I don't know. Just it's just what good players do. They just go back to back to back to back. You know, I mean, and what what what, what guys do. I just use an example. One of my favorite players in the league, Note. Uh, even when he doesn't shoot it well, he just affects the game in other ways. At six two, where's the fifty fifty ball, hand on a ball, up in the air, bam, throws it right to a guy. Uh, maybe lays it in the heat of a game. You know, so you got to find other ways to affect basketball games when you're not, you know, not scoring or shooting. And today, I thought Austin affected in a lot of different ways. Any further questions for Coach? Thank you, guys.